Excuse me, I don't know why, but I'm on here twice looking at my screen. Um, and I don't know how, because I've just logged in on this screen. I'm only logged in on one computer. But you seem to have got me again. I don't know if that's someone else by mistake. We do, Councillor Ross, I've just seen that myself, sir. So. Um, and I don't know how, because I've just logged in on... Are you on two screens, Councillor? I'm not, but I'm going to log out and log back in. Oh. Um, could Jamie just take that other screen off and see what see what happens? Certainly, Council. I'll do that now for you. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, that's done for you. You are live on YouTube. Okay, so good to go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the virtual meeting of the Environment, Environment and Performance Committee. Uh, my name is Councillor Judith Skinner, and I am chair for this committee. And Councillor Judith Wellborn is now vice chair of this committee. Welcome, Councillor Wellborn. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity of welcoming the new members, uh, Councillor Tom Ashton, Councillor Martin Howard, Councillor David Brown, and Councillor Chelsea Trafford. Um, as is our protocol for ensuring public awareness of who is in attendance this evening, I would ask Karen to do a roll call, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, if all attendees could answer their attendance, thank you. Councillor Tom Ashton? Present. Councillor Peter Bedford? Present. Councillor David Brown? No. Councillor Anton Danny, Mr. Mayor? Uh, present. Councillor Deborah Evans. Present. Councillor Paul Goodale. Here. Councillor Martin Howard. Present. Councillor Neil Hesty. Present. Uh, Madam Chairman, Councillor Judith Skinner. Here. Uh, Vice Chairman, Judith Wellborn. Present. Uh, Leader of the Council and Portfolio Holder for Regulatory Services, Councillor Paul Skinner. Present. Andy Fisher, Assistant Director of Assets and Lead Officer of the Task and Finish Group Review. Present. And that's uh, myself as uh, clerk to this committee, Karen Risk. Thank you, Madam Chairman. That concludes the roll call. Thank you, Karen. We'll now move to part one of this evening's agenda and address the preliminary items. First is to receive apologies for absence and notification of any substitution of members. Thank you, Madam Chairman. We have one apology for absence from Council Chelsea Trafford with no substitute member. We've also got apologies from Christian Allen, the lead officer for the committee, and also from Susanna Rolfe, the IT and Transformation Manager. Thank you. Thank you very much. And part two, number two is to sign the minutes of the last meeting held on the 8th of September 2020. Um, if any members who attended the meeting as committee wishes to challenge the accuracy of the minutes, could you please do so now? Nobody showing, Madam Chairman. Okay, so if there's no comments, I will take it that I have your agreement to sign the minutes. Thank you. Number three is to receive declarations of interest in respect of any item on the agenda. Councillor Goodale is showing, Madam Chairman. Councillor Goodale. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. It's just really, um, well, I probably need some advice, really. It's with the re recommendations on... Uh, um, part two of the agenda, uh, agenda item two, task and finish review. There were specific items relating to uh, BTAC. Um, and as the present chairman of BTAC, I wonder if I need to declare an interest in that and not do an abstain from the vote, really. I, I, I just need some advice on that. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Can I respond? Yes, you can, yes. Yeah, Councillor Goodell, we will note you down as a declaration that you are the chairman of BTAC. However, you are voting in your respect of a member of the actual task and finish group review. So you can vote. That's no problem. OK, that's, that's cleared that up for you, Councillor Goodell, hopefully. Thank you. And number four is to answer any written public questions. Karen, are there any? No questions, Madam Chairman. Thank you. That concludes the preliminary items and we will now move to part two of the agenda. Our first item this evening is the work programme, which includes the quarter one performance figures. 
An updated forward plan has been provided in hard copy. Um, before we consider the work programme, I would like to invite Andy Fisher to give us a brief overview of the quarter one figures, um, please, as the information will assist the committee in looking at future working. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Chairman. As uh, uh, committee members will be aware, um, I'm lead officer for your uh, uh, opposite um, scrutiny committee. So um, this isn't my uh, day job, bread and butter, but every meeting you receive uh, your work programme. Uh, one of those key items is scrutinising the latest set of performance data that's available. As you will see from the report in front of you, uh, we've now completed the compilation of quarter one uh, performance information as they relate to the two priorities of your committee. Um, corporate priority one, prosperity, and corporate priority three, place. Um, as you will appreciate, April, May, and June of this year have been like very few, if any other years in most of our uh, living, living memory due to COVID. We were at the peak of lockdown during quarter one. Um, Mrs. Rolf has provided the report that you see and has asked me to highlight to you that uh, severe impact of lockdown on a lot of council services and uh, how that has impacted on the performance data that you have received uh, in this report this evening. Some of the key areas of focus are around our car parks and our car park income. You will appreciate that we suspended car parking charges following government uh, advice during quarter one. Uh, we closed our leisure facilities, we closed our guild hall uh, in accordance with the regulations prescribed by government. So the figures as they pertain to those service areas you will see um, are uh, very, very different to the previous year's quarter examples that are offered in the report to you this evening, members. Um, other service areas that you scrutinise, for example, environmental health, our antisocial behaviour and community safety functions. Um, I was head of regulation during quarter one lockdown and we refocused an awful lot of our service delivery to support the government achieving uh, its aims of keeping people safe during the first wave of the pandemic. Some of the areas that uh, we're responsible for in quarter one, for example, planning performance, commercial waste collection, uh, our engagement with commercial waste customers, you will see from the information you've had the opportunity to read, uh, remains uh, highly performing, but other areas, um, other, other areas simply didn't. Um, and unfortunately, that comes back to the impact of coronavirus uh, on, the, on the world and the uh, two performance areas that you're responsible for, Madam Chairman. So the data is in front of you. One of the key focuses of this committee is to scrutinise that data and then to decide whether um, it suggests the committee um, may wish to explore or interrogate any of those areas further by additional reports being added to your work programme for considerations at future meetings. If there are any questions, I will do my best to answer them given my corporate hat. Uh, if not, uh, Madam Chairman, I'll undertake to take those questions away and provide the committee with a written response if that is satisfactory to you. Fine, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fisher. Um, the next meeting of this committee is on the 4th of January 2021. Um, that has three items scheduled for that meeting. Um, they're noted on the work programme on page 20 of the agenda. However, we've nothing scheduled thereafter for the February meeting. So I'd like to open it up to the committee for um, questions on the quarter one performance and um, any suggestions for or anything that they want on the work programme going forward. Councillor Tom Ashton, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Ashton, would you like to? Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Before I begin my questions, I'd just like to um, um, add my uh, congratulations to uh, Councillor Wellborn um, to see her in her place as Vice Chairman of this committee. Um, I think, as Madam Chairman, you may note from um, previous occupants of this post, it, 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 it's a post in the council which augurs incredibly well. Um, the last three occupants um, of the vice chairmanship under you, Madam Chairman, have gone on to the cabinet as their next stop. Um, 
so I'll move on to the questions that I've got um, or observations that I've got, and they're mainly around the planning um, performance, which I'm really pleased to see is incredibly good. I know, um, and this may be in the previous council term, we had a information evening, a briefing evening, um, looking at the figures and there were questions asked at that time, uh, I think that's back in 1819 perhaps, why some of those figures had dipped. I'm pleased to see that consistently um, across those graphs, the trend is in the right direction and we've had some extremely good performance um, on our major planning application to get 100% um, in quarter three, quarter four of 1920 and quarter one of 2021 um, is incredibly good and puts Boston up there, I think, um, with some of the best planning authorities anywhere in the country. And having um, quite a bit of interest in this area, um, I know, and, and having spoken to um, councillors involved in planning across the country, um, any that there are councils that really struggle to hit the bare minimum so to consistently hit these targets is a credit um i think both to our planning officers that we have in this council and also the effectiveness of the local plan which was adopted um a little while ago now um that there doesn't and i i mean i i, I speak as much as the chairman of the committee watching the committee business come through on there um that I think it's the sign of a good plan, a plan that's working well um, and isn't subject to a great deal of challenge um, from members or members of the public or communities or parishes. Um, and I suppose the other thing that I picked up on here was on page 13, which is CP3, the waste. It will be very interesting to see how these st um, statistics develop over the course of the next year and beyond um, as I've obviously noticed that uh, Boston is going to be one of the first district areas to move to paper and, and card um, recycling, um, which hopefully should encourage those recycling figures in the right direction, the residual figures downwards. Um, but I think that's obviously something that we will need to monitor closely um, to make sure that that goes um, entirely right. Um, I mean, they're not questions, they're just observations that I think are, are pertinent and re relevant, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for those comments, Councillor Aston. Is there anybody else wanting to speak? Oh. Councillor Peter Bedford, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Councillor Bedford, would you like to come forward? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, like uh, Councillor Ashton, I'd like to uh, congratulate Mike Gildersleeves and all of the planning team on the amount of work they put in to get these figures where they are. It is appreciated, but as a councillor, I'm slightly worried that we keep getting planning meetings cancelled. Is it because councillors are not requesting things to come to the planning committee? Because there's a lot of work going on out there. You can see contractors here, there and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it does worry me that we're not having planning committee meetings at the tour, but that is just a comment, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bedford. Oh, as we have the Chair of Planning <laughs> with us tonight, uh, would you like to come in on that, Councillor Aston? Um, with your indulgence, Madam Chairman, I appreciate that this isn't really um, scrutiny of the uh, planning committee, but I think I can probably help Councillor Bedford a little bit there. Yes, I've asked exactly the same questions, that this paucity of business that we have coming through the planning committee is, I think, unheard of. It's certainly unprecedented. Um, but at the same time, the uh, having asked the question, the answers do genuinely appear to be that we have a new and up-to-date local plan that is fulfilling its function well. It isn't being challenged. There aren't um, speculative applications trying to beat the pa beat the plan um, or um, alter or contest any of the policies that we're working to. Um, I am personally very keen that 
all members do understand the call-in procedure and how that works. And again, it's something that longer standing members, it comes very naturally and newer members, it might not. And I have um, I have raised tentatively that we need to be looking at refresher training as we come possibly into the new year to again just refresh training for all members that would like to avail themselves of it um, and to hopefully give the reassurance that Council Bedford is looking for. Thank you very much hopefully that's answered your uh, query Councillor Bedford. Is there anybody else wanting to speak? Not at this moment Madam Chairman. Oh Councillor Danny, Madam Chairman please. Thank you Councillor Danny would you like to come forward? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Just uh, I, I want to come to the number of fly tip incidents on page 17 of our report. We can see the quarter one, 2021, 624, which is a big increase. It's almost three times or double the times before of 2019-20. Uh, so my question, is there any pressure put on the county council to resolve the issue of the fly tipping and after talking to a number of residents in Boston uh, most of the Bostonians they agree that the tip should be probably open seven days a week not five days a week and not from eight to four and having specific times because some people they had problems they booked a time and then when they went it took them three days to have a time to go to the tip but when they went there they were shocked uh, by the workers at the tip who told them you can come anytime you don't have any issues with booking a time you don't have to book time is there anything we can do here to sort out this problem because you can see now fly tipping everywhere sydney street is packed and other streets around and i think probably that's a question to be answered okay, thank you Councilor. thank you madam chairman thank you mr fisher did you want to comment on that? Um, I can pass comment based on my understanding, uh, Madam Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, during quarter one, you're absolutely right. The tip was closed and people hypothesised that there was a direct link between fly tipping and the tip being closed. It wouldn't be for me to uh, suggest whether that's right, wrong or indifferent. But um, uh, I think there's some validity in asking the question. Um, I believe that councillors have already... Um, had a uh, had the executive member from the county council here and challenged the county council directly on their strategy during uh, the first phase pandemic lockdown. I understand, um, and I can clarify this tomorrow for the committee, that the county council will be leaving the TIP operational in Boston during the next four week uh, lockdown period. Um, but I, I must clarify that that is my, under, uh, my understanding from a um, a brief discussion I was involved in this morning. So I think from the um, Waste Disposal Authority rather than Collection Authority perspective, uh, there's a recognition that the availability of the tip um, throughout the next phase lockdown from Thursday is um, pretty important and valuable to residents of Lincolnshire and particularly of Boston. Uh, if I may come back, Madam Chairman. Yes, Councillor Danny. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, can you please, Andy, just make sure if the tip is open as normal, because at the moment it's open only five days a week, and I think Wednesday and Thursday is closed, and they have specific times and dates and days for a specific kind of uh, rubbish. If you can make sure that we can get the right information, that will be appreciated. Thank you. Councillor Deborah Evans, please. Thank you. Councillor Evans, would you like to speak thank you um thank you madam chairman um i just wanted to support um councillor danny really because it's the biggest complaint i hear for definite um about not being able to get to the tip um my friend actually booked a day off work went to the tip um and you've got to have 15 minute slots and then if people are there before you you're, you're in the wrong line um and then there were certain things they wouldn't take so she, she came home with things and you hear of this constantly and I, I 
I do actually hear people saying that they understand some of the fly tipping, um, which I never heard anybody say before. And yes, we did we did have a, a quite a long meeting and scrutinise with um, the um, councillor, the county councillor. Uh, but I did feel the county councillor felt that he was doing a fantastic job, and the reason they were undersubscribed at the bin at the tip, and uh, because they were doing such a good job. Um, in my sort of opinion or what I'm experiencing is they're undersubscribed because people aren't using it. They're so fed up, they're not sure when to go. So I think we need to keep the pressure on because I came away from that meeting feeling that every, everybody had had a chance to say um, how upset their residents were, etc. But I don't feel that um, I felt like they thought perhaps it was well, one of the things was, was said that we couldn't read, <laughs> which I thought was a little bit offensive. Um, and I just think that he wasn't actually listening to what we said. And I came away from the meeting feeling it, it was a, a waste of time. Um, and uh, he felt that the tip was run extremely well. I think it is run really well, but it's just not open... Uh, long enough and the mixture of taking different things on different days is upsetting people and the biggest thing people are saying to me is they liked it as it was but they don't like it anymore so I just want to really support Councillor Danny on that because I too uh, feel there's still issues with the timing and things the Wednesday and Thursday closing I think is a big issue for people but thank you very much. Councillor Paul Goodell please. Good would you like to come forward? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I agree with um, Councillor Evans and Councillor Danny, really, uh, about the tip, but I, I, I don't actually look at it as an excuse for the fly tipping that's taking place in the town at present. I um, mean, as Councillor Danny said, um, Sydney Street, is, there's more stuff there than there is at the tip. Um, and I, I, I did report it. Um, and, and to be honest, our team are very good. They, they, they come around and they collect. Uh, but as soon as they've collected it, it's back again. Uh, and um, I know the quarter one figures show um, are, are very good. Um, I, I don't know what the quarter two figures will show, um, but we can't obviously, we're looking at quarter ones. But um, my experience around the town is fly tipping has got worse and worse and worse. Um, and um, obviously um, because of COVID, um, one of the biggest things we get around uh, in my ward is mattresses. Um, and it's 72 hours where they can be collected because yeah. of COVID. That's after they've been reported. Um, so they may have been there three or four, well, a couple of days before they get reported. Then it's another 72 hours before they're collected. I appreciate we can't do anything till it's reported because we necessarily don't know. But at the top end of City Street at present, there is, what, I should say 60 black, plastic bags with food waste and all sorts in <coughs> the refuse collection tip is tomorrow but those bags won't be collected within that um, because it, uh, for whatever reason um, the path is blocked off because of the refuse that's on it um, and I'm just wondering whether we uh, as a, um, a committee can actually um, uh, as a council really need to look at whether we actually increase um, our um, workforce to um, in the short term to to tackle fly tipping because we've obviously lost um, the uh, the help of uh, our um, local prison the the the, the, uh, the prisoners from there who can't come out because of of COVID uh, and there was the obviously Boston is is effectively on its own now and the partnership was finished. But um, I am concerned that the team we actually have are just being overwhelmed by, by the amount of waste and rubbish that's being dumped. Um, and although the council, the, our team, are, are, you know, they're, they're actually performing very, very well uh, um, um, over and above what we'd expect, really, to some degree, because some of the stuff which they actually clean up is, is terrible, Madam Chairman. Mm. Um, so I mean I have no problem with the, the, the workforce and the staff but I, I just wonder if we actually need to uh, to ask uh, the cabinet or um, to look at increasing the workforce to actually help with this 
uh, problem because um, although um, there is problems with the tip, I appreciate that. I don't accept that that's a reason for dumping mattresses on the street. I mean, there, there are three at the top of Sydney Street presently now, um, and that's that's not because the tip's closed. There were mm. mattresses tipped there every week, mm. um, and that's done nothing. There were tipped there every week before the tip was when the tip was open fully, mm. and so were the bags being dumped and everything else. There's a fridge freezer there. Well, th they were all there before. So it's not nothing to do with the the county council and the tip. We can. Uh, I'm not saying some of it maybe is a problem, and some people may think. Oh, but I, um, most reasonable people wouldn't think. Oh, the tip's closed. I'll dump it. Um, some people would, but I mean, um, um, uh, well, they, I don't class those as reasonable people. But I do think we need to really press um, the council to increase its workforce, even if it's in the short term, to assist with this, because um, believe you, madam, it, it, it is, in my view, and I, um, it's becoming a health hazard uh, around the town. There is, that, there, is, there is that much stuff being dumped on the streets now, and our, our teams just cannot cope. They're being overwhelmed. And we do need to really press uh, the cabinet or whoever to actually um, do something about it if possible. If the county council could help, I, 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 but they probably won't. Uh, in fact, I, I got the impression from Councillor Paul that they were happy with what they were doing and they weren't going to do any more. Um, uh, but I do think the county council could assist. Um, you know, although they say curbside collection is our problem, um, which it probably is. But um, all I could say to the people that dump it, just throw it on the road, then it comes the county council's problem because it's on the highway. But I thought the footpath was part of the highway as well. Um, but there you go. It seems to be our problem. Um, but um, I do think we really do need to look at getting on top of it, Madam Chairman. And if that means actually employing more people, then I think that's what we're going to have to urge the council to do. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Um, Mr Fisher, did you want to come back on that? I don't know whether we're straying into asking about operational. We could... We could uh, ask ask if there is adequate staffing given the circumstances. Um, it's uh, a bit difficult for me to really give much comment, uh, Madam Chair. I mean, clearly it's within the gift of the committee to make any recommendations to any other committee of the council, including the cabinet, that it would wish. Mm. Um, staffing, of course, is a matter reserved solely for the chief executive. However, from a point of strategy, community mm. impact, etc., it wouldn't be uh, unconstitutional, I don't believe, if the uh, committee chose to ask the cabinet to review the level of resource allocated, particularly during this time. Mm. Um, but I say it's not it's, it's not my area, so I'm a bit unsure uh, as to what uh, you may wish to recommend. But constitutionally, you can. Of course, you may not choose to do. Yeah. Also, there's the, there was the questions about cameras in hotspots. I know they've got delayed due to COVID as well. So it would be nice to know um, exactly where they are as well. Um, so that we could get because as Councillor Goodell said, there was um, that, uh, you know, it's a continuous spot in Sydney Street. So it would be useful if we could could find out who actually is doing this and, and prosecute them. So if, uh, uh, Madam Chairman, if I could suggest maybe um, we could ask the clerk to uh, contact the lead officer uh, on his return mm -hmm. uh, so that he, at the next committee, can provide that update to you directly. Yes, yeah, that, uh, yeah, and, uh, and obviously to, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, ask the Cabinet to, to look at the strategy on, on uh, resources for fly tipping. Can I just come back on that there, Madam Chairman, please? I mean, yes. as a recommendation, could I ask that we, as a committee, ask the Chief Executive to review the staffing of the, of, uh, the fly tipping team um, because uh, to see if they are. I, I, I actually honestly believe that they're, they're working so flat out now, they just, just, it's just catch up for them all the time. Uh, and we can't, can't really hold, praise them highly enough, but... Um, at the end of the day, I think we have to recognise that the, the situation is getting too great for them. So, could we, um, as an, as a, 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 I appreciate what Mr. Fisher said, and I accept that um, mm -hmm. and for future meetings. But could we, um, from this committee, ask the chief executive to review the uh, the staffing of the fly tipping 
team to make sure that they are adequately resourced so that they can cope with um, the problems which we have in, in, in Boston. Yes, I, th I think we could, we could we could do that with, through, through Cabinet um, to, to uh, make sure that the resources are enough. If um, the clerk could um, send that through to them. Can we just clarify, are we going to Cabinet or are we going to direct the Chief Executive? I think Council got very intimidated to go straight to the Chief Executive with the recommendation. Was that correct? That's that's correct, my yeah. Chairman. Yes, I'd like I think it that's to... the best way to go. Yeah, I mean, uh... yeah that's fine. Yeah. I yeah. think once the Chief Exec, if we do send something like following concerns raised at committee, the committee asked the Chief Executive to review the staffing of the flight shipping team in Boston Borough to ensure they are adequately resourced to cope with ongoing increases in volumes of fly tipping. Yes. Is that agreeable, Councillor Goodale? Thank yeah. you. Do you have a seconder? I can second it. Thank you, Councillor Danny. I know you've got your hand up to speak, Councillor yes. Danny. Do you want to speak before I go to a vote? Yes, if I, I may, please. I would love to speak because just some few things. Because uh, the reason I raised my hand, because I was going to talk about the fly tipping and especially Sydney Street. And why I'm going to talk about Sydney Street is because I know for sure that the two houses at the end of Sydney Street coming to Brothertoft Road, they are both of them as um, uh, homes with multiple occupants, both of them on the, each side. And each side, when they move in, they just tipped everything outside. There is mattresses, there is bin bags. Last time it was like five bag, black bags with glass bottles, uh, cans of beer, name it, it was there. So it's every day because what I was going to recommend, I will agree what Councillor Goodell has said, we can go straight to the chief executive, but I want to make a recommendation as well to our officers, whoever is in charge of that, to send a, probably a letter explaining to the landlords when they move in anybody to any of their houses, especially with multiple occupants, they should make sure that they cannot tip everything just on the side of the door or the house and uh, allow them to have the phone number of the flying fly tipping squad of Boston so they can contact them. Um, it may solve the problem, I'm not sure, but I think they have to be aware that there is penalties as well if they just do that. Because I do believe when they move in, it's no other options. You find the mattress very dirty, what can we do? Put it outside. It's going to be picked and they think it's going to be picked because you put it outside. Maybe they think it's normal. But like I said, it becomes a culture and we have to break that culture and make people aware that it's not allowed to do that. It's against the law. It's free to collect mattresses from homes if they are not needed. And that's what they have to understand. But unfortunately, I think I move in. I don't need the mattress. I don't need this rubbish. Take it outside. Leave it there. Somebody will call three days. It's picked. Oh, no harm done. I'm just doing OK. So I think this is the culture which is we have to break in. And I think we have to issue letters to the multi to, to the landlords of these kind of houses. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dolly. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Fisher, do you want to come in on that? Just from a point of logistics, uh, Madam Chairman, um, mm -hmm. the only address information we would have as a local authority are for houses in multiple occupation that are statutorily licensable. So there will be, the, the, uh, we've discussed before um, at both of the scrutiny committees, there's no legal requirement to register with anybody a house in multiple occupation that doesn't consist of five or more people forming two or more households over one or more floors. So um, of course the authority could write to those uh, landlords uh, whose details we have, but it may not include the properties that we are concerned about. My advice to anybody would be, if they see any fly tipping, particularly, particularly elected members, come and talk to myself and Mr. Allen, we'll take a section nine witness statement from you and we'll do our best to bring the perpetrators to justice because fly tipping is a criminal offence, let's not forget. So, um, you know, if anybody sees the dumping, there's a lot of hypothesizing that stuff comes out of properties and I'm absolutely convinced that it does. But unless we see it or we've got an evidential link, actually, that there's very little recourse that we can do. But yes, we've got a database of licensed properties, not of other HMOs. Um, but I'm certainly happy, Madam um, Chairman, to take that back, talk to my housing colleague 
as to what we can do to try and make an impact given the scale of the challenges we've just discussed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Councillor Dunny, is that acceptable to you? Yes, that's very good. If we can get, you know, a little bit of research on that, I think it will help us all a lot. But definitely, if I see somebody dumping, uh, yes, I will report it. But these two houses, I'm pretty sure because they are always changing tenants, and especially the one probably when you're coming from Sydney Street towards Brothertoft Road, the one on the left, it used to be a post office downstairs. That one is always changing tenants. I cannot tell you who owns that house, but... I might have an idea, but that place, yes, it does a lot of fly tipping. I cannot prove because I haven't seen them doing them, but always the rubbish is just around that house. Now the opposite side, they do the same because sometimes they're just drinking and putting things and going in. So if we can get some more information, that will be very helpful. And if I see them differently, I will report them to you, Andy. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Katz. Thank you, Madam Chairman, thank you. Okay, so Karen, we need to go to the vote on the Council Goodell's recommendation. We do, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, the recommendation is that the CXB ask to review the staffing of the fly tipping team in Boston Borough. Be moved by Councillor Gray and seconded by Councillor Dunny. Members, please, for or against or abstention. Councillor Tom Ashton? For. Councillor Peter Bedford? For. Councillor David Brown? For. Councillor Anton Dunny? For. Councillor Deborah Evans? For. Councillor Paul Goodale? Oh. Councillor Neil Hasty. Oh. Councillor Martin Howard. Oh. Madam Chairman, Councillor Skinner. Oh. And Vice Chairman, Councillor Judith Wellborn. Oh. That's unanimous, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Is there anybody else wanting to speak on the work programme? Not at this point, Madam Chairman. No new items have come through for February's meeting, but we do have January's meeting where we can discuss items. So. Oh, and yes, there's a chase round officers as well. Yeah, so thank you very much. So, so um, members, if you have anything that you would like to bring to committee um, in between meetings, there's always the form to, to fill in and, and send in, and uh, then we can add it to, to the uh, agenda. Thank you very much for that. So we will move to our second report this evening. This is the report from the Task and Finish Group. Uh, this is a, a one I will lead on. Um, it's been a very productive review. It was suspended due to lockdown, which did result in the initial scope being amended, reflecting the impact of COVID. You will see from the report that the initial public consultation returned in excess of 150 responses that were, were used to identify key areas of concern. Allowing the group to seek further consultation from various support services within the town. Two very in-depth meetings followed. The first with the police and the council's licensing and land charging manager in respect of issues relating to alcohol licensing. This enabled the group to identify recommendations to try and address many of the concerns raised in respect of licensing laws and public perception of the council's role in granting alcohol licenses. The second meeting was with the police and the council's community safety manager. The group had requested a report be produced to, to detail comparative police activity for both Boston and Horncastle and Skegness. This activity was pre-COVID, during lockdown and post-COVID. The report is attached at Appendix E of the report and starts at page 67 of this agenda. I would recommend members take time and read it as is very informative. Following lengthy questioning of the police and community safety officer, the group were able to gain their opinions and insights into how issues could be addressed, resulting in a number of recommendations to address the areas of overall concern, both um, onto cabinet and directly onto BTAC. The final recommendations of the group start on page 90 of this agenda, and you'll see that they include some requiring legislative changes. And the group is asking Cabinet to mandate the local Member of Parliament to take forward the recommendations requiring government consideration and to champion them on behalf of the community. 
Before I ask the committee's comments, we have both portfolio holder and the lead officer of the review with us this evening, both of whom supported the review throughout. And I would like to ask if they have anything they wish to say. Um, I'll first ask Councillor Paul Skinner, who would like to comment. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This, this has been a really thorough piece of work. Um, quite rightly, you've pointed out that um, COVID actually messed this up a little bit and uh, may, maybe we'll probably get a chance to look at it again in the future, but ne not, not demeaning it in any way at all. It's highlighted quite a few issues. We've had lots of people that are out at night on the streets under no normal circumstances reporting, taking care into our community and and uh, I, I quite support the um, recommendations that come out of it. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Fisher, would you like to comment? Just say, Madam Chairman, that uh, it was uh, really insightful for me being the lead officer, despite a lot of the service that services that we focused on being those that fell into uh, my former custodianship. I think the discourse that we had in relation to licensing and the recommendations that have come out um, are incredibly robust um, and they are really quite far reaching. And uh, I, like uh, the committee, will be really pleased to see how they're uh, taken forward. Um, I think the information that we heard from uh, our community safety manager and the police really demonstrated the level of partnership, working and engagement at the very operational level, the, op the, the level that makes a difference to people uh, is, is really quite robust. Um, I think it gave us opportunity to really understand some of the resourcing challenges as well that we have in an enforcement context around that regulating and safeguarding uh, role and also how vital and important it is to ensuring a vibrant and sustainable um, uh, economy in, in um, you know, our urban areas. So. It was a real privilege for me, Madam Chairman, to have been your lead officer. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Mr Fisher. And I'd now like to open it up to the committee for questions and comments. Anybody would like to speak? Nobody at this moment, Madam Chairman. All quiet. Uh, I, I would like to speak, Karen. Thank you. I put my hand up. Okay, Councillor Dunn, thank you. Uh, sorry, there is one thing which is I want to clarify, which is I think is very important. And then I think um, uh, just a comment or probably it could be questioned. The first thing which is I want to uh, clarify is that um, uh, about alcohol licensing. When somebody is a, a shop is met with a fine because of selling something illegal, alcohol or cigarettes, and then they are open for business the next day, early mornings, not having any light, and people are in and out. My question, is there a follow-up after the fine is issued? Is there a follow-up to see if these people are still trading? That's my, 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 my probably uh, a question. It's a question if Andy can answer. Um, th thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I suppose my answer is it depends what the sanction is and what the uh, and whether the fine discharged um, the uh, offence in the first place. So if the shop had had its licence revoked, then no, it absolutely shouldn't have been done. But of course, a fine uh, in British law, if you pay your fine, you very often that 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 meets the offence. And unless uh, the licensing process or the licensing committee um, or a, a licensing hearing has revoked, amended or changed anything, then it may have been perfectly legitimate for that trading, if that's a real example you talk about, to have gone on. Um, but of course, in, in British justice, once you have paid your penalty, uh, that, that effectively wipes it. But from an intelligence-led perspective, if the licensing team had further concerns, they would engage with the police, trading standards, et cetera, depending on uh, the nature of the breaches and would potentially further investigate. Um, but that would be part of the evidential process and part of the licensing process in accordance with our policy uh, being intelligence led. Well, the reason why I ask this question, because there is a shop probably on uh, West Street coming to the High Street, which is, was fined, I think, of around 12,000 pounds. 
and basically they were selling illegal cigarettes and it's supposed to be closed because another one was was fined as well and that one has ceased to exist that's it so that one still trade in early mornings which is there is no light in the shop but people are in and out so it just raised my my eyebrows and my attention so so thank you Andrew. so cigarettes and alcohol are two very different things in the licensing context and hence why one of the recommendations from the committee was to license the sale of tobacco um, because you're, you're absolutely right. In an illicit context, the two have very often been proved in courts of law to go uh, hand in hand. But if we're talking of uh, illicit cigarette sales, then we're not the lead enforcer in relation to that. So that would have been a trading standard stroke police uh, incident. But certainly from an alcohol perspective, um, should there be a fine issue, that will often uh, dispose of the um, d- dispose of the offence. But then, of course, the licensing committee and the internal processes we've got um, would undertake the requisite reviews and so on. Um, but certainly, uh, I think the whole of the task and finish group agreed that um, tobacco licensing is something that could well um, protect people from ongoing harm um, should that be introduced by the government. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Andy. My second thing is talking about regulating day and night time economy. And I think the results are fine. But during these hard times of COVID-19, I think the night economy, we can say bye to it because I think it's, it's, it's and, and I'm talking from my experience as well. I'm just a small coffee shop and it does hurt you. And I don't know the people working at night. And I think the bars and restaurants are getting as well. They are feeling it now. The only places which is probably still thriving at this moment is the one who does uh, deliveries. So uh, that's the only businesses probably which is they're making the money and they're surviving. So uh, I don't know how we can now have, um, uh, or we can see the future for these businesses in town and what will happen to them probably next year, because I don't know if COVID will be, will be free of COVID by spring or October next year. So nobody knows. Can you give us some, some just information, Andy, if you can just clarify something. Um, Madam Chairman, the, in, in terms of uh, business support and business recovery, um, my colleague, uh, Neil Cooksey, uh, leads on economic development. And I certainly know Neil at uh, management team this morning um, explained how we are waiting for further government guidance in, uh, in respect of the lockdown regulations coming in on Thursday. There are new business support models and uh, things coming forward for businesses uh, that operate at all hours, so not just those that operate in the uh, evening, but as certainly uh, throughout the entire alliance, we're acutely conscious of the impact that coronavirus is having on businesses. Um, We've been incredibly proactive in terms of processing our first rounds of business support grants and so on. And um, I'm sure we will be equally proactive as we go forward when we know what support the government is going to give us and enable uh, us to support businesses during this uh, second, uh, during this second wave. Uh, I think your question is the million dollar question, if you had the answer, isn't it? Um, What will happen to businesses going forward? It's about, I suppose, um, you know, businesses having the agility and flexibility to diversify as far as they can. But I think um, clearly a number of businesses will not be able to survive. Uh, You hear in the media and on the television and the news uh, every day since uh, the Prime Minister announced on Saturday night the next wave, how businesses have managed to survive on their uh, reserves, but this this probably will be it. So let's hope that the full package of business support and um, reinvigorated furlough uh, scheme that's um, you know coming into the fore will protect as many of our local businesses, save as many local jobs as possible, because um, you know it's really really hard times for uh, employers and employees. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Councillor Ashton, please, followed by Councillor Wellborn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, very briefly, I mean, my observation um, to draw attention uh, on recommendation 11. I appreciate that I am um, not par- I, I'm not BTAC, but I do have um, some experience of parish councils, and I did wonder, um, and I just put this out there as a as, as a suggestion um, for di- for discussion rather than. Um, a hard and fast idea, so I appreciate it's outside of my field a little bit. Um, 
discussions are held the discussions are held between the council and police to agree a way forward facilitate regular public meetings allow questions by public etc cetera, etc cetera. um most parish councils have an item on their agendas for a report from the police um and i wonder whether that was something that btac might like to consider um obviously parishes very rarely get an active police presence but given the issues that are um, prevalent um, within Boston I don't think it would be an unreasonable ask if BTAC were minded to ask the police to come along and uh, just be part of their um, give an update at their meetings I mean I don't know whether that would work for BTAC I know it's what the parishes do and it's just a suggestion um, to put out there um, the rest having um read through the report i think it is a fantastic piece of scrutiny the level of detail that is gone into in as but as, as part of the research um is 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 genuinely outstanding it you know this isn't a um quick run through this is a qualitative piece of research um i think the key point the other key point that i pick up is that an awful lot of the improvements in the license, licensing regime um, stem from inadequacies in the original legislation, um, I think the 2011 Act. Um, if it, I'm right in thinking it was 2011. No, it's earlier than that. Um, anyway, um, 2003, I'm getting confused between acts. Um, yeah, it is. It, it stemmed from that um, that process, which transferred uh, responsibility from the magistracy to um, local authorities, and left quite a lot of holes um, in what was very clearly designed to be a a a, a much lighter regime than I think that previously existed. Um, and clearly we are now having to pick up the pieces of that um, and I would wholeheartedly support um, any lobbying effort this council or how members of parliament might achieve in um, pressing the urgency of revisions to the licensing act to give us the tools that we need here locally um, to regulate we've been given the duty to regulate we've been given the responsibility to regulate um, and we really need the tools with which to do so in the interests of our communities um, but I think it's a key point that an awful lot of what we would like to do we're not we're unlikely to be able to do until there are changes in primary legislation um, so um, either way it comes with my wholehearted support that this is something we absolutely need to do Thank you very much, Councillor Aston. Um, on, I can come in on recommendation 11 um, and the fact that the, the police were very keen to set up um, these uh, regular public meetings um, to see if that helped um, uh, you know, with the public's questions and, and making things clear to the public. Um, so that was that was the reason for that one. I know I'm I'm sure that that um, BTAC already I don't know, they used to uh, have a, a, a spot where one of the the police came to the committee. So Councillor Goodall could probably confirm that for me if that's still the case. Councillor Goodall, not to yeah. come in on that. Yes, Madam Chairman, that is still the case. Inspector Harrod does uh, come to BTAC on a regular basis. Um, so that is still the case and as you rightly say this was a a, um, a, a thing the, put forward by the police as a, as a uh, as an extra to that and uh, obviously it's it's a monthly meeting and BTAC don't meet uh, doesn't meet on a monthly basis anyway um, so it is a totally separate meeting which um, I, I think we all agreed would be a, a good way forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for clarifying that, Councillor, Councillor Goodell. Um, Mr Fisher, did you want to add anything on Councillor Austin's comments? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Chairman. OK, thank you. And uh, so next it was uh, Councillor Wellborn. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, my uh, statement is basically about uh, the locking down of the park gates, which I know will go to BTAC. Um, as having spent most of my life in Boston and the park being uh, locked off at the time, it is something that I would be very interested to see where, if the trial, and hopefully it does happen, to see the difference it makes. Um, I know quite a few residents in that area who are still, you know, they're elderly, they've lived there nearly all their married lives, and they are 
disappointed by, and it's not the youths, um, a lot of it is sort of people who are now homeless because of um, the situation in the town, who do go in the park late on, they do drink, they do put the music on. Um, and I will be so pleased if this is taken forward by BTAC. And I would like to say that as working on this, I, it has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, the input from outside forces, the police and people in Boston, and the work that Karen actually does in the background, which we all know is, is brilliant. We couldn't do it without her. Um, and I have so enjoyed it as my first task and finish. And uh, yes, I think we've, we can all give ourselves a bit of a pat on the back and hopefully all the recommendations are taken forward and we can see the outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Ron. Uh, uh, it has been a very in-depth in review, and everybody um, has um, contributed to the, to this uh, task and finish group. And um, a lot of people came forward to, to put the comments forward, and it is, it is really good to get all round participation. Hopefully, to make things a lot better for the residents. Any other speakers? No other speakers at this time, Madam Chairman. We do have recommendations. Clearly, oh. Councillor Goodell wishes to come back. My, my apologies. Oh, no, that's all right. Councillor Goodell. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, well, I suppose I ought to comment on BTAC, but I don't, don't really think I should at this moment in time. But um, BTAC did consider the closing of the park gates um, almost a year ago. Um, and obviously, the conclusion of that is um, fairly obvious, is they're still open. Um, but um, I mean, I, I, we're, I'm, because it's a recommendation from this uh, scrutiny uh, committee, uh, um, BTAC will consider it again. Um, but uh, obviously, um, just obviously, I need to sort of just uh, mention to, to um, raise it at this committee really that BTAC don't, don't actually have the right to employ anybody, it's the council that employs people. And it would need to be the. Um, we could only recommend if that was the case. Um, mm -hmm. But um, a, a, apart from that, Madam Chairman, uh, just to really um, reiterate what other members of the Task and Finish Group have said, really, I mean, uh, it was a an in depth piece of work, and I'm my apologies for actually missing the last meeting, but I was unavoidably detained. Um, so I have my apologies for that. But um, no, I did receive your apologies, Councillor Goodell. That's, that's... So. Well, thank you. Um, but I mean, but it, it has been, a, 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 you know, a good in-depth piece of work. And, and to be honest, I have to really thank uh, all the committee members, yourself and the committee members, and, and really everybody that's attended and, and gave us a, a statements and gave us their time because it was, um, a, a, at times, it was uh, <laughs> quite heavy going, I have to say. Um, yeah. um, but um, with the... With the members on there we actually got through it which is which is very good um the only thing i would i don't know whether it's an, a, a recommendation to add or but i'll just I, my, um uh, my, my wife and i we went out the other evening in town for a meal and we were coming back through town and all the lights were off wide bar gate there was no lights on the marketplace there was uh, the odd light on mm -hmm. west street there was no lights on um, and then we talk about um, antisocial behaviour and things like that. And, and all through the middle of the town, there were no street lights. They were all off. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know whether that's a deliberate policy of the county council, but everywhere else was on. Just Wide Bar Gate was off, mm -hmm. Marketplace was off, and West Street was off, apart from the odd light. Uh, and... Uh, I, I, well, I say, I, I, with a lot of the shops now being closed and everything shutting down at 10, as it were, I mean, it was just about 10 o'clock when we were walking home. Mm -hmm. so it was it was actually quite dark. Well, it was very dark, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, but all around, everywhere else, I mean, once, once we got at the, to the end of West Street, that all the lights were on, all the lights were on off the streets off West Street, but West Street was out, and so the marketplace was out, and, and Wide Bargate too. Um, so I, I, which I found sort of kind of a That's bit. Sort of salt, Councillor Goodell. Pardon? 
Unless there was some sort of fault with the... With no, the... I don't think so, because I, I, I asked around and, and one or two people have actually said to me, oh, well, West Street's been off for a week, a couple of weeks. Mm. So, I mean, I, I, it was only... Um, perchance, well, so we, we don't... Um, <laughs> Well, I say we don't go out that often at night now, which is probably true. But um, we we went up town for a meal, and, and we we were walking home, and it it was. I thought, well, you know, um, and I would have raised it actually at that last meeting had I actually managed to make it, which I didn't. Mm. But um, I, I just wonder whether that's um, um, something which um, either can be added to uh, the recommendation that. But I, I don't really see how we can edit the recommendations as such. But I do think that if we're talking about antisocial behaviour within the marketplace, the town centre itself, then the lights not being on would, would be a contributing factor to that. Um, and, and I just don't know why they're not on. I, 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 whether it's a cost-cutting exercise or what, I don't know. Or whether you say that, as you say, Madam Chairman, there was a fault. But it's if it was a fault, it seems to have been a fault for a long time. Mm. Um, and um, and I'm sure that um, for it to be off for that amount of time, that at least one county councillor would have actually noticed. Um, and uh, um, I haven't actually been able to speak to one um, at present because um, I've. Uh, um, but I I um, I have tried to find out what's going on and why they're off, but there hasn't I haven't had any responses yet. But. Um, it's just something that if anybody knows why they're off, uh, or maybe we can raise that as an issue. Because I, I do think we do need the support of the county council in this. If, if we have street lights in the town, that they are working and they are on. I appreciate the urban areas are switched off, um, the streets and everything, but um, I, I thought the town was supposed to be kept on, but maybe I'm wrong. But thank you anyway, Madam Chairman, that's my rant over. <laughs> that's all right, Councillor uh, Mr Fisher, is there any, any, do you know anything on, um, on that? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, one of my colleagues is clearly listening on uh, YouTube and has sent me a text saying that um, he has reported that issue to the County Council uh, and at the point he reported they were unaware of how the timer system was turning off. So the County Council are looking at that on the notion that they've been going off before the um, agreed uh, cut-off so that has been raised um, by uh, my colleague in operations and um, he's awaiting a response. I understand that the police have always also reported that the lights have been going off at times different to that that they had expected. OK, so, so is that all right, Councillor Goodell? It's obviously not something that should be happening. Well, no, Madam Chair. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. It's something that shouldn't be happening. And I appreciate that, that um, you know, you expect it when the clocks go forward or backwards, but... Um, mm. I, I wasn't actually, I mean, as I say, it's a long while since I've been uptown that late. Um, but I wasn't actually aware that they were part of the 11 o'clock switch off any either, because it, it was seemed to me to be a rather strange thing that we have a town centre, uh, supposedly with, anti you know, um, with things going on after that, or normally, on a normal, per, uh, a normal that they're actually sw off on, at 11. I, I don't know. Yeah, that they may not be switching them off at 11, but they're certainly now aware that they're going off significantly before 11. Right. <laughs> well, whatever, Madam Chairman, I just think they should be on all the time. If, 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 if they are switching them off, I think we need to really ask the County Council to uh, to look to uh, keeping them on anyway. It, I can't see that, that they're now they've all changed all the lights over anyway. I can't see the cost being that great. And, and if, it, uh, if it helps, uh, we need to uh, help the town recover as quickly as possible. And um, I think having the lights on is, is one of the ways which we need to, to do that. But thank you anyway. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Councillor Dami, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I just, uh, I was gonna talk actually about the lights because I had complaints from some few coffee shops around and there is one next to me uh, at uh, Bridge Street but uh, the, they say that the light, when I asked them when was that, they said the light was almost two or three months ago in Bridge Street, they were off and the High Street. It's not just recently, uh, probably it has been happening before. I didn't know that until, you know, as a uh, Councillor Goodale said, 
uh, you know, it, I think last week or probably, yeah, last week I was talking to the lady of uh, the owner of the coffee shop and she said, no, it happens before. I said, why didn't you tell me? She said, well, I'm just telling you now. I think we should have a serious word with the county council because these things is not something to play with. If you are trying to work for the night trade and make businesses work and we want our town to thrive, I think this thing shouldn't happen. For me, it's a sort of sabotage by the county council, probably just you know, to, to save money for themselves and, uh, you know, oh, something is wrong. I don't think so that the high street or any streets in the town centre should be without light. And you shouldn't, you know, we have banks, we have jewellery shops there, we have everything there. I mean, it's the town centre, for God's sake. We should have the lights there and the main streets in Boston. That's one thing. Secondly, I was just going to talk about the question res results, which is, is fantastic when you read all of them and the perception of the public. Most of the public, they have an issue with our licensing. My question, what are we going to do about, about our licensing? That's one thing. Most of the, the second issue is the littering and, 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 and the rubbish in the, in the streets. That's the second. The third thing, people are drinking early in the morning. Yes, I met people six o'clock in the morning with four cans of beer, a bottle of vodka and a black bag. They are going to drink. This, I'm not going to, you know, um, criticize, but that's how they do it. They finish work, they go and get drunk probably and go to sleep. And this is the things which is raising again, the fly tipping because they live in a room, they're gonna accumulate a, a, a few cans and bottles. So where you put it, you put it outside and you go back to your room. Now coming back to the lighting in the street, it helps as well the fly tipping, I think, because people, they do it in the dark. And I think, as I said, uh, at my first sentences and my first words is we have to have a serious communication with the county council to solve these kind of issues. Electricity, the lights are very important for the city. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you, Andy. Councillor Deborah Evans, please. Thank you. Um, thank you. Where are we? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to um, bring up um, two possible things concerns for to add to a, a future meeting um, one uh, for me is a big concern is uh, providing toilet facilities in the town for the residents uh, and for anybody that's visiting so that's something that's ongoing that I think would be if we could bring that up at a future meeting I, I, I would be really pleased about that um, and the other thing and it might not be the right um, place for a uh, right committee for this but certainly there's been a 65 percent increase in the last six months on people actually stealing dogs either um, approaching people um, and uh, Spillsby Road and Freeston had has had um, definite um, situations um, and a young boy was walking a pub near um, the um, Tesco's, um, the, the pub near Tesco's, um, and somebody with a bat hit the The hammer on pincer. Yes, yes. Um, and the boy actually managed to keep the dog. Uh, and then um, somebody was broken in on Curtain Road yesterday uh, during the day, 10 o'clock in the morning, and they don't know if they'd broken in to take the dog, but the dog was with them. So I just think this new era of crime, which seems to be getting quite aggressive, um, would be something that would uh, we could talk about because for myself and I'm sure for everybody that's got a dog, they're actually a, a family member and it's definitely a concern. So it's what we could do to sort of curtail this new crime or um, if the police can give advice. Or... So those are the two things that would would be very helpful for me. Um, and so I just thought I'd say them while I was um, on I'm here. About them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. That's all right, Councillor Evans. That's going back to, to the um, first item on the agenda. So I'll just uh, ask, ask Mr Fisher that the toilet facilities, obviously um, with the community toilets, we've lost the um, Aldred's ones. Um, so, I, um, I mean, we do have facilities of, of our, our own. I just wonder if it's um, worth doing a report on how our facilities are available due to covid um, because I know some of the toilets aren't um, spacious, very spacious, so no. I wonder if we could look at something like that. 
we, we can, I can tell you now, Adam Chairman, and we've got the park toilets closed because we're not confident we can make them COVID secure and relying on people following COVID secure guidelines. Um, the executive has decided that we'll keep those closed, but our others are uh, open at certain hours because we feel that it's safe enough to do so. You're absolutely right. The community toilet scheme is still in operation. Unfortunately, we've lost one set, but uh, we, and we've had questions over others uh, that we've we, we've addressed. Um, but if you'd like me to set that out on the paper um, for your next meeting, I can tell you what is open at the juncture of our next meeting, which will clearly be dictated with how this uh, second phase um, national circuit break goes. Yeah, it is. It is very very difficult at the moment to. But things have been it's I think it's like the the um the stumper part of the community toilet scheme aren't they but obviously they've had, they I think they're having to close aren't they because of the of the four week lockdown so that means there's no facilities from them is it okay to come back I can tell you now without you having to look which toilets are shut the stump toilet has been shut nearly the whole time so there's been no stump toilet um, the waterfall plaza toilets have been shut the whole time. There's no waterfall plaza. Uh, most of the restaurants, um, even the Tate's Fish Shop, you can eat inside, but you cannot use their toilet. So um, at the skate park, we're absolutely packed with people. And all those people, <laughs> they've got nowhere to go to the toilet. I have to go home to go to the toilet when I want to stay in Boston. Um, and so I know if I'm going home and I'm, you know, relatively fit, etc., I won't be the only one. I know there's going to be a lot of people. So the only toilet that you can find available and then you have to queue for quite a long time is the one in um, the next to the green in the second um, car park. Okay. So I do know there is no toilet facilities in Boston many times. So if you can tell me that there is one community toilet open so I can tell people, that would be great. <laughs> we, we, can, we can certainly um, report that back. I mean, I think the issue to um, really hold in the forefront of our minds is that we're in the middle of a global pandemic and actually the guidelines around COVID security, I think are taking precedent over the concern for people being able to use. Um, at the management team this morning, however, um, across the alliance, we agreed that we would keep, or certainly lead politicians agreed to keep, the existing sets of toilets that are open, open, that are publicly owned. We absolutely recognise the challenges people have, um, but we've prioritised public safety, and I think those businesses, those autonomous businesses, despite their um, agreements with us in relation to community toilet scheme have prioritised under their own health and safety risk assessment. So uh, it's a really difficult situation uh, at the current time. So if I come into the council offices tomorrow and shut all your toilets, I can guarantee you that you will change your mind. It's, it's, it's very, I mean, I will say it's very difficult, different in a work setting. So people do, going about their recreational business and of course, come Thursday, people shouldn't just be going about in recreation. There will be very specific purposes and reasons from Thursday for the next four weeks, yeah. you will be able to go out. So um, I, I think if we bring something back to your January committee, yeah. when we are clearer, whether we are still in a national lockdown situation or not, I will be able to have contacted colleagues who are operating the community toilet schemes to see what their position at that uh, that there time is. But toilet so the scheme has failed um well, and so can i just say that i'm not talking about thursday i'm not talking about in the future i'm talking about what's been happening and people not being able to go you've given free parking but why you can't go and park where there's no toilet so let's look at this i think it's right. really important thank you that's a well -bone. did you indicate you wish to speak yes i did karen thank you um, it's just I'd like to say, Debbie, the uh, toilets in the Waterfall Plaza have been open, but you had to go to the, the little cafe to go get access the key. Um, even if you hadn't had a drink in there, they were quite happy to give people the key, especially disabled people. As I've told two or three people when they've said to me, the toilets aren't open. I've said, if you go ask for the key, they would give the key to anybody if they you know, requested it, but it wasn't just open to the general public otherwise. Um, right. 
Okay, <laughs> but that clears up that one. No, because I go to the little cafe once a week, the little kitchen, um, and so um, they'd, the toilets were shut. Went to the toilets, there's a big sign on the door saying, you cannot use these toilets. Yeah. So obviously it's only if you... And I'm a friend of the owner, so it's not like... Well, I so went... So, in the know. Well, I went a couple of weeks ago when I... I when I leave volunteering on a Saturday, I call in there for a drink. And uh, I'd sort of said, oh, yeah, can I order me drink? And is it all right to use the toilet afterwards? She said, oh, do you want the key now? And I went, oh, yes, please. And, uh, yes, I used it, and so did three other people. So if I, well, honestly, I've <laughs> every week and I've not been able to use the toilet. So um, I, I will ask about that and I will. I will let everybody know because it, it has got a big sign on the door. Do yes, not. It does. Yes, I agree. But as I say, um, there was a lady in a wheelchair that said to me, oh, you can't use it. And I says, I'm sure you can. And I says, come with me. And I went in and said, there's a lady in a wheelchair. She needs the toilet. And they said, oh, here's the key. Give it to her. You think it was because you said that the lady was in the wheelchair? Well, yes. no, because I used it the same day. So and well, so did I, two or three other people. Well worth knowing because I go in there quite a bit. So. Yeah, so. Well, you, you will when it after December again. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much, councillors. So what we'll do is we'll get Andy to do a report on, on uh, what facilities there are, are in the town so that it clarifies it if anybody asks us as councillors um, and, and what times they're open and uh, the availability. If that's all right. Okay. Um. Just going back to the um, Andy, uh, going to back to about the stealing of dogs. Is is that under our remit? Is there anything we can look at on that, or is that a police issue? Um, Madam Chairman, that's a um, theft or attempted theft is a criminal issue, isn't it? So that's the police. Um, I have seen uh, the police putting out positive and proactive messages about uh, uh, about it on their social media. Um, what I'm happy to do is to uh, talk to the local inspector and ask that they're particularly robust and prevalent in their communications about uh, about dog theft. They themselves have highlighted it to the community through their media channel, so the police are obviously aware. Um, but I'm more than happy to have another word with the local inspector um, just to air the concerns that the committee's raised this evening, if that would be helpful for you. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Evans. No, that's it. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so is there anybody else wanting to speak, Karen, on item two? On Not the... at this point, Madam Chairman, no. Okay, so um, shall we go to the, the recommendations? Would you like to? Is there anybody ha happy to move and second the four recommendations within the report? I can move the recommendations. Okay, I'll Councillor Danny. I can Sorry? second. Councillor Wellborn, uh, well what's well, up? Thank you very much indeed. That was Councillor Hasty. Councillor Hasty, I beg your pardon. I do apologise, I couldn't quite hear. Sorry, <laughs> Councillor Hasty. Thank you. If committee are uh, mindful to move to the vote, then it's been moved by Councillor Anton Danny and seconded by Councillor Neil Hasty that the committee agree the four recommendations at the top of page 90, taking into consideration the 13 group recommendations thereafter following. If members could say for, against or abstention, please, I'd be grateful. Councillor Tom Ashton. Councillor Ashton. Come back. Councillor Bedford. For. Councillor Brown. For. Councillor Danny. For. Councillor Evans. For. Councillor Goodale. Councillor Goodale. Come back. Councillor Hasty. Oh. Thank you, sir. Madam Chairman. Oh. Uh, Councillor Howard. Oh. Um, Vice Chairman. Oh. Thank you. We'll just go back to the toilet and get Councillor Ashton. Oh. Thank you, sir. Councillor Goodale. Oh. Thank you. That's unanimous, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. 
Okay, our final report this evening is the annual scrutiny report on page 95 of this agenda, which has already been considered and agreed by the Corporate and Community Committee. Members will see that despite the loss of meetings during lockdown, it has been a very productive year for scrutiny across both committees. Alongside busy committee meetings, all strands of scrutiny have been undertaken. A number of member briefings and inquiry evenings have proved very beneficial. We have had a productive member working group and a productive task and finish group review. Scrutiny has also acted as a consultee, held a public meeting at the Guildhall and facilitated a call in. Or in all, the scrutiny process has been very busy this year. I'd just like to ask um, Mr Fisher if he's got anything else to add. No, Madam Chairman, uh, as you say, I think it's been, despite the challenges we've had, um, a significant amount of really good, really informative, really valuable scrutiny. Um, and the audit of scrutiny um, suggested that to be the case as well. I'd like to take um, questions from any members, any comments? Councillor Danny. Thank you, Councillor Danny, would you like to comment? Uh, the only thing what I want to say is I uh, just want to pay compliments to the team and our officers for the hard work they do. And I tell you, uh, I mean, to be frankly and to be honest, during this COVID-19, they did a very, very good job. And I think the whole council has been put together as one team and they delivered. And I think I hope we will deliver a better results in the future for our community and for Boston. Many, many thanks to all the hardworking people, you know, behind the screens. I can add my sentiments to that as well, Councillor Danny. Thank you very much. Nobody else has shown, Madam Chairman, so okay. of course, take it to the vote. Yes, if please. Everybody's happy with it. Yeah. Yep. Can somebody move and second, please? I will move it, Karen. Thank you, Councillor Danny. Do I have a seconder? I will second. Thank you, Councillor Wellborn. Thank you, Committee. It's been moved and seconded that the annual scrutiny report is recommended to Cabinet. Uh, four against abstentions, please. Councillor Ashton. Councillor Bedford. Thank you, sir. Councillor Bedford. Four. Councillor Brown. Four. Councillor Danny. Four. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Goodale. Four. Councillor Hasty. Four. Councillor Howard. Four. Madam Chairman. Four. And Vice Chairman. Oh. Thank you. Again, unanimous, Madam Chairman. That oh. concludes that item. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so that's that uh, indeed um, concludes the uh, the agenda for tonight.